Welcome to another CISSP Micromodule 1.4b, which is where we get into the privacy law tenets. And what we're going to learn in this quick lesson is the tenant terms, and then also get into a memorization trick or tip that I came up with, also called a mnemonic, that will help you hopefully in the exam. So let's get right into it. The first tenet is, and I've changed the order. You might see these in a different order, but I changed this in order to make a, a, an easy memorization tool for all of you. So participation is the first one that we're going to cover. Participation basically means you have the option to participate in whatever transaction is about to collect your data. The next one is limitation. This basically means that uh, this is this is I believe the use of the information. Yes. So the person who's collecting or the agency who's collecting your information there has to be a limit on how they can use that data and they have to tell you how they're going to use your data. Um, so quickly note here that there's going to be a difference between use and collection of the data. So a quick example here and I love this picture because it illustrates it perfectly but you have to they have to use your information exactly how they state they're going to use your information exactly how they say they're going to use your information for example this drum this guy can't use a drum as a sleeping bag I mean you can't use a drum as a sleeping bag right I mean you could but that's it wouldn't be right and so that's that's what this is saying here is you have they, they have to limit their use of your information scope is where we talk about the collection so there's use and there's collection and so the scope is where they have to notify you before they collect the information or create the information and they have to tell you the scope of what they're collecting it for so this is why we're collecting it and then this is why we're using it so scope refers to how they're collecting it why they're collecting it, it has to be legal and it has to be ethical whereas the previous slide where it talks about limitation is the use and I put these out of order and, and I apologize for that but that's only because of the memorization trick that comes later so use is limitation and scope is collection collecting the information so now let's talk about accuracy accuracy basically means the information has to be factual it can't have errors it seems pretty intuitive now let's talk about retention retention is basically how long they can keep the data they have to state how long they're going to keep it they can't keep it any longer for what they need it for and that's called the retention period. And of course, security. How is the information going to be secured? How is it going to be protected? So on and so forth. Dissemination. How is the information going to be shared? How is it going to be disseminated downstream? And I believe the last one here is notification. So the data subject, or you and I, have to be notified how that data is going to be used, um, what it's going to be used for, how it's going to be shared, and this has to happen before it's collected by you or created. So if they have your data and they want to create it, do something else with it, they have to notify you. So let's do a quick quiz. Which of the following is not a privacy privacy tenant? Which of the following is not a privacy law tenant? Now, these double negative ones happen to be very tricky. So what I like to do is think of there are three going to be three good ones and one bad one. So let's look for the three good ones first. There's going to be three privacy law tenets that are good. The first one here, the subject should not be the subject should be told at the time that their data is collected or created. Well, that's true. That's a good one. The data should be collected for a specific legal and ethical purpose. That's pretty good. The subject's information should only be retained as long as it's needed. Yes, that's the retention tenant. The data can be shared with others. That's kind of vague. I mean, if it's legal, yes, but we're not going to get into all. You can't make any assumptions when you're taking the exam. You just have to answer based on the information presented. Based on that, I would say D is the incorrect answer, and D is in fact the uh, correct, incorrect answer. Correct. Anyway, you know what I mean. So privacy, that is the privacy law, not the privacy law tenant. So let's get into the memorization trick or the mnemonic for this. And what you should do is you should write this down on your memorization sheet exactly as it appears here. It's going to help you. PLS, <coughs> like that, which is going to be 
you'll see later. And then you're going to write the A, the R, the S, the D, and the N. So the P is going to be the participation, I believe. Participation, let me just see if that is the correct term. Yes, participation. Oh, right, there's two S's, but they're not two P's. Participation, the L is for limitation, and the S, do you remember what the S is for? First one is for scope. A is going to be for... Um, uh, A is going to be for accuracy, right. R is going to be for retention. S is, uh, no, we already said scope, so this uh, security. And again, you're going to write this down a bunch of times. I, I recommend doing this in addition to the, the trick to remember security. So there's scope and security. And then the D is going to be for uh, dissemination, and the N is going to be for notification. So let's get into the trick, the mnemonic. Write this down as well. The PLS is going to be for please. The phrase is going to be please acquire or reveal some donuts. So you're going you're to repeat that. You're going to write this down. You're going to repeat that. But you're also going to write down the real words along with this. And I recommend writing it down over and over and over until you memorize it. And that's what I did for a lot of this stuff is I wrote it down several times. You remember back in school, if you're as old as I am, when they made you go up in the front and write down the words a hundred times on the board, it actually works. It helps you to remember things. So that's what I did. I wrote down all this stuff and it helped me to memorize. So please acquire some or reveal some donuts because I'm craving donuts right now. As always, thanks for watching. And if you want some more practice questions, some really good practice questions and some hard practice questions, head on over to cissprep.net and sign up. And it's $4 right now for or $5 for six months. And the price will probably go up eventually. But for now, that's sort of an introductory price, and uh, you can you keep your membership for six months, um, and it's, it's very good. I'll make a separate video that kind of covers what the website is like, in case you're interested, and uh, if not, that's fine too. But thanks for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful. Have a great day.